Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include UK not ready for EU referendum, says David Cameron. Nigel Farage is right about the EU. David Cameron's renegotiation plan is pure grandstanding. Tory MPs' EU vote bid sparks Nick Clegg warning. And EU lawmakers urge action on energy prices to save the steel sector. Plus, in your letters, Star Etheridge writes, the tripartite known as the Lib Lab Con. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The British public do not want a referendum on EU membership yet because it would be an unfair choice between an unsatisfactory relationship and the exit door, David Cameron has said. The Prime Minister slapped down a Conservative MP calling for an EU referendum next year, saying it would not be sensible to hold a poll before he had had a chance to push for reforms in Brussels. Speaking in York, Cameron said the public did not want a referendum yet because they did not have a proper choice. Adam Afrihi, the Tory backbencher, is pushing for a referendum next year, claiming voters want to have a say before the next election. He has tabled an, an, an amendment to the Tory-backed EU referendum bill that promises a vote by the end of 2017. Well, friends, is it not exactly as I predicted last Wednesday? Chairman Cameron has immediately attempted to crush this move for democracy. In fact, the words are different, but the rhetoric from Le Bon Premier is the same as last Friday's story, where the EU stated the EU cannot allow a referendum in Britain because it risks losing a key member from the bloc. So, who then is Mr Cameron acting on behalf of? He says the British public do not want a referendum. Lies. Complete lies. The pocket puppet of the basket case Barroso is lying. He was handed, outside 10 Downing Street, a petition with over 120,000 signatures from the British public who wanted a referendum on Europe, and he whipped Parliament to quash the motion. He is doing exactly the same with this amendment. This is an affray in the face of democracy, and Chairman Cameron should be ashamed of himself. UKIP leader Nigel Farage argues in a piece for the Daily Ter Telegraph that David Cameron's EU strategy is doomed to fail. He is right, as far as Farage notes, the Prime Minister thinks he is on an EU ship heading west, but in fact he is strolling westwards on aboard a ship that is heading east to ever closer union. Farage goes on to say, quite accurately, it is also about time that the pro-European establishment of this country was honest with us. There will be no change in our relationship with the EU before, during or after Mr Cameron's futile renegotiation. The EU knows this, Mr Cameron knows this, and the people of this country need to know this too. Well, don't forget, folks, we're going to be looking at this issue in depth on our live show, Critical Thinking, later this week. On Wednesday at 2pm, in the show, Trevor Coleman, MEP, myself and our guests will look at the history and structure of the EU. Based upon the Brave New Europe articles from our website, we will look to demonstrate precisely why there will be no change and no representation of the people in the European political institutions. Join me and our The Unit community on Google+, and we'll invite you to come along and join in our panel discussions using Google Hangouts on Air. Alternatively, of course, you can watch the show live on our website, theunit.com, from 2pm on Wednesday the 16th of October. It's time to challenge the myths about leaving the European Union, says Lib Dem leader. Leaving the European Union would be economic suicide, Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg will warn today as he takes on UKIP and Conservative Eurosceptic calls to quit the EU. The Liberal Democrat leader's call to arms follows Tory MP Adam Afray's surprise announcement that he would seek a Commons vote on a 2014 in-out referendum. Mr Afrayi's move sparked fears among Conservatives that a leadership-backed private members' bill designed to place the 2017 referendum guarantee on the statute book could be scuppered. Well, where is the evidence? 
This is one of my favourite statements, and it's always the first question that should be asked of any statement. Nick Clegg talks of economic suicide if we leave the EU. Well, where is the evidence? Perhaps it's the line that Britain exports over 80% of its output to the EU. Well, that's not true. Andrew Fear researched this in detail, and it turns out that all outbound shipping goes via the port of Rotterdam, and that everything transiting through the port is counted as EU exports, even if it is bound for destinations outside of the EU. Ian Milne, an independent economist, has written volumes on the potential for Britain to trade globally, and his conclusions have always sided against EU membership. And finally, we have real-world examples that this is simply more lies. Look at Norway, the country thrives outside the EU, and Iceland has actively rejected the EU because its economy is doing well outside of it. Mr Clegg, you are lying, sir, and you are hoping that the British public won't ask the very question, where is the evidence? Friends, our political leaders are nothing but a den of vipers, lying and deceiving with only their own personal interests at heart. In the words of a once great American president, we intend to rout you out. And by the grace of God, we will rout you out. High energy prices, climate legislation, trade restrictions and research and development are the four biggest challenges facing Europe's steel industry, the European Parliament's Industry and Energy Committee heard in debate on Wednesday. The liberalisation of the EU's electricity and gas markets has not delivered, Hungarian centre-right MEP Andras Gjörg told the committee. We have to concentrate on high energy prices, said Gjörg, who is the lead negotiator for the Parliament's report on the European Commission's action plan for a competitive and sustainable steel industry in Europe, which was unveiled in June. We have a clear crisis looming. The UK already lost its steel production, which was moved to India by Tata Steel, as a direct action of EU carbon tax credits. Steel plants in Hungary are now under threat, and as I reported last week, the EU is assaulting Italian steel production. These policies are madness. They transfer critical secondary industries, manufacturing, to the Far East and South America. Take a look at the struggling US economy, which has pursued the same course, albeit for apparently different reasons. They have a vacuum in the secondary industry sector of their economy. Any GCSE geography student will tell you that if your secondary industries are missing, your primaries don't function, i.e. mining, mineral extraction, etc. And neither do your tertiary or service sector, because there is no one and nothing to service. So if Nick Clegg wants to talk about economic suicide, then this EU strategy would be a good place to start, because at least there is evidence to support his claim. In our letters section, Star Etheridge writes, Throughout my life, I have always been very inquisitive. I have always been very interested in politics, not the theory of it all, but the impact it has on every person in the UK and often the world. I have seen Labour governments, Tory governments, and now this sheer abomination of a coalition government. I have seen how administration after administration have been led towards bringing about the complete downfall of our nation. They have entrenched us deeper and further entwined into an almost federal state of Europe. So the only option is for the people to take back control of their country. However, to do so it will require people to vote for any other party than the tripartite known as the Lib Lab Con. They are not three disparate parties that are actually different factors of the same agenda. Now, many thanks to Starr um, for this brilliant piece of writing, and please do keep your letters coming in to us. Today in our video library, let me give you a quick preview of what you can expect on Wednesday. Our live interactive show, Critical Thinking, is broadcast live from our website and on Google+. You can join the panel as one of our guests. Follow the links to our Google Plus pages for details. You can, of course, interact using Twitter. Ask your question by using the hashtag TheUnit. In this video, Trevor Coleman, MEP, and Renzo Zembrano, a teacher from Venezuela, and myself discuss the question, what is democracy? This Wednesday, we'll be discussing the history and structure of the European Union, and I hope that you will be able to join us. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.